In a barren desert between the Andes Mountains and the Pacific Ocean lies a wonder of the ancient world. For centuries, archaeologists wondered what purpose it served. No one was even certain how old it was. Thirteen stone towers set on a ridge. For some, it looked like the tail of an alligator. Others believed it was a lunar calendar marking the waxing and the waning of the moon. But it was Peruvian archaeologist Ivan Gessi, who had been studying them for two decades, who unveiled their true purpose by observing the rising and setting arcs of the sun. This is a solar calendar. It may have had some lunar elements that we need to investigate further, but we are certain that the position of the towers on this horizon clearly coincides with the passage of the sun from fixed observation points along the year. So that, for instance, tower number one, which is the northernmost tower, coincides perfectly with the sunrise at the date of the June solstice. Conversely, at the other extreme of the towers, tower number 13 matches perfectly the position of the sun during the December solstice. Between tower six and seven, that is exactly at the middle of this series of towers, you can see the sunrise exactly on the day of the equinox. The 2,300-year-old ruin, which lies in a desert valley in northern Peru, was one of 30 new global sites given UNESCO World Heritage status this year. The 13 stone towers built between 250 and 200 BC show a sophisticated understanding of astronomy, says Gessi. For a society with no known writing, with nothing to keep track of uh, in terms of clay tablets or paper, or, or papyrus, um, it is extremely precise. Archaeologists believe that the astronomer priests, part of the elite in this ancient society, would have stood at this exact point to watch the sun rise over the 13 towers to calculate the precise time of year to within one or two days. Possessing a simple geometric beauty, it works not unlike a giant sundial, marking the time of year from the position of the sun over or between the towers. Chanquillo is the 13th World Heritage Site in Peru and the third to be awarded the status this century. Chanquillo, as opposed to the other examples of ancient observatories, marks dates twice a day, every day, for the entire solar year. It is the only uh, horizon calendar that we know of that is complete that functions every single day. And that element, that attribute alone, that element clearly rises it up to the World Heritage status. Archaeologists believe the site was likely abandoned in the early first century CE and was largely forgotten until the 19th century. No human remains have been found at the ruins and little is known about the society which would have lived and worshipped here. But the towers have remained standing at this remote location near the modern-day town of Kazma. The earliest observatory that we know of from the old world is in Iran from the 13th century. Now, it's quite late and of course we know that uh, the astronomy of the Greeks and the Romans and the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Babylonians was, uh, and the ancient Chinese were, was very, very sophisticated. However, these buildings have not survived. So, as we speak, uh, Chanquillo is clearly the oldest observatory that we know of. And certainly, certainly, probably with more confidence, we can state that is the oldest known in the Americas. Calendars to mark the time of year were hugely important to ancient societies. The position of the sun would mark the time for sowing and reaping crops animal husbandry, as well as fishing and hunting. For people at the time, these were the fundamental elements of daily life, and even the difference between life and death. But Gessi believes the towers served a purpose beyond the everyday. We need to conceive of Chanquillo as something that serves an even higher purpose. And when you look at the integrity of the site, not just, at, not just at the solar observatory, you realize that the entire place is a ceremonial center clearly devoted to the cult of the sun. The entire site points to the sunrise on the December solstice. Every single stone around us at this moment has an orientation 
that pays tribute to the December solstice sunrise. That time of year would mark the advent of the rainy season when water would flood this arid desert valley. Rivers flowing from the Andes Mountains to the east would turn the Chasma Valley into an oasis. A barren hill to the west was the perfect vantage point to observe the 13 towers and the sunrise over the Andean peaks. Here, more than two millennia ago, this ancient society built a temple fortress. Today, archaeologists and architects work to restore it to its former glory. La idea es por lo menos tratar de que la arquitectura se entienda. Indudablemente no vamos a poder llegar a las alturas que ellos han han tenido, por ejemplo, muros de 6 metros. Ahora no los vamos a poder reconstruir a, hasta esa altura por lo menos, pero sí de, podemos eh, re, reconstruir o restaurar, mejor dicho, hasta hasta cierto nivel que permita la estabilidad de esto y sobre todo la comprensión de la arquitectura. The rebuilding uses as closely as possible the original materials, stones from the site itself and local river mud mixed with water as mortar. The work can be painstakingly slow as archaeologists log each stage of the restoration process using a photogrammetric survey. The result is a 3D mapping of the restored sites as they would have looked in their prime. This is one of the many passageways in the Chanquillo hilltop fort. All of them are narrow like this and have sharp corners. The idea was to prevent intruders. What appears clear is that this temple was built to be defended from attackers. We are inside the fortified temple and we are right next to the Temple of the Sun. Despite the formidable defenses built to protect this temple, at some point in its history, it was attacked, conquered, and partially destroyed and buried to try to erase it from history. This building was very important and we call it, we recognize it as a solar temple because first of all, it, it is oriented towards the December solstice sunrise. It is decorated with the images of supernatural beings and we have found inside some instruments that also determine the solstices and the equinoxes. Not with horizon markers like the 13 towers, but by using beams of light and dark, beams of light and shadows that project onto a wall and help determine the, the dates very precisely. So this would have been uh, perhaps the nerve center of this, the Chanquillo culture as it was, or the Chanquillo society, and where the, um, as you call them, astronomer monks or astronomer priests would have um, calculated uh, the calendar. I think so. This, mm. this clearly would have been the house of the sun. Mm -hmm. From the plaza, that is east of the towers, where thousands of people would have gathered their certain dates, obviously called upon by, by the priests. From that plaza, people would have seen the sun set exactly over the temple of the sun at a certain date. This windswept desert plain looking west is where Gessie believes the people would have gathered to watch the sundown over the towers. The abundant pieces of broken pottery are evidence that there were ceramic vessels, large and small, holding food and drink, which likely included chiche de jora, an alcoholic beverage fermented from maize. Other stone materials show this area may have been a kind of square. Gessie and his colleagues are just beginning to discover what that may have meant and looked like at the time, as they continue to unravel the mysteries of Chanquillo.